Hey everyone, it's Liz from Thrust Flight. I'm the Chief Flight Instructor here, and today we're going to be talking about slow flight. I'm going to teach you slow flight today. It's going to demonstrate how the aircraft behaves when it's slow. So what you're going to do, we just cleared the area first. You're going to power back to take a throttle back to 1700. Okay. okay. We're going to maintain level flight, and our airspeed is going to maintain altitude and level flight. We're, our airspeed is going to bleed off. Uh, we are underneath the 110 mark, so if you want to put your first notch of flaps in. Okay. Flaps to 10 degrees. Okay, we're still maintaining 2500. Okay. Now, four like, continue down to Echo, turn around to Echo, attach the parking via Bravo. Put your second flaps in. Echo to Bravo. Okay, we want to bump up a little mark. power just to ma maintain uh, a little bit of airspeed. Okay, you want to trim out trim out the airplane too to make sure that uh, we maintain. Yeah, I'm definitely to land. it. Yeah, so One, trim it back nine, a little bit, okay, uh, well, I guess we don't have to yet. All right, we can pull power back a little bit more and put flaps full. Okay, flaps to 30 degrees. Here it comes. Okay, what speed am I looking for? I'm looking for 45. Okay, 45 knots. Just above stall. 45 seconds. Okay. Okay, we're losing just a little bit of uh, altitude, air, air speed. So bump up just the just power just a little bit. We can pull back, pull back on the yoke just a little. Between 45 or 50 knots is uh, is good enough for me. All right, so this is what's slow foot. Okay, good. 24, just a little hair under 24, a little bump in power a little bit. Give us a little bit of climb. I feel like I have to add a lot of power to get it to climb. Is yeah. that pretty normal? Yeah, that's pretty normal because we are in a high drag uh, on the lower end of the power curve. So we are in a high drag, low speed environment. So you're going to need a bit more power to get us through even two or three knots. All right, good. We're in a nice slow flight regime, 2,500 feet, 50 knots. Go ahead and give me a 90 degree turn to the right. Okay. Now, because we're slow, a little bit of loss in the lift component component of the forces of flight will cause us to drop our nose a bit. Maintain it with our trim and our yoke, trim and our power. Traffic, 2 o'clock, low, 1 uh, mile. Okay. He's opposite direction. He's, uh, okay. Go ahead and make, give me a 90 degree turn back to the left. Okay. Get out of his way. He's still 500 feet below us. Good. So you feel how mushy the controls are, how much throttle response is required to even keep, maintain airspeed, maintain altitude. Yeah. Um, so in the pattern, when we're going you know, downwind to base or base to final, your controls are going to react in a similar way. You're going to be similarly full flaps, low airspeed. you got to uh, be comfortable with making large movements in the control yoke just to even get minimal movement in, um, in direction. So. That's why we practice this, and that's why it's such an important maneuver for uh, for learning how to fly. So to recover, you're going to go full power. Okay, now. Yeah, go full power. And let the nose down a little bit. Let the nose go. We're going to build up airspeed, try to maintain 2,500. Let the, push it over a little bit more. Okay. Okay, now we're going to go flaps to 10, uh, flaps to 20. Okay, still push over a little bit more. Let the airspeed build up, flaps to 10. Number one, okay, three, maintain eight, 25 eight, one, six, as airspeed builds up, and then flaps finally to full. One, six, clear to land, uh, two, zero, one, three, Yankee. <laughs> I mean, that's not cool, that's up. And we're starting to build airspeed. Maintain 2,500. Let's not hold to let go taxi tango via Alpha Monster ground point six. We are now recovered. Alpha tango monitor ground three. Okay. Nine. So now that you've seen the maneuver, we're going to talk about some of the common errors students make while flying slow flight in a Cessna 172. Oh, this slow flight. We're gonna. I'm gonna teach you slow flight today. It's gonna demonstrate what the air, how the aircraft behaves when it's slow in specific regimes such as takeoff or landings uh, into an airport. Okay. So I want you to feel the mushiness that are that is in the controls when we're especially going around the pattern slow in landings. Okay. Okay. So what you're gonna do? We just cleared the area first. You're gonna power back to take a throttle back to 1700. Okay. Okay. We're gonna maintain level flight. And our airspeed is going to maintain altitude and level of flight. We're, our airspeed is going to bleed off. So let's pause here for a second. Land gives me some instructions and says, pull the power back, maintain level flight. So how do you do that, right? Um, 
When I'm here in the aircraft and I pull the power back, all of a sudden the nose feels heavy. The airplane wants to pitch down like that. So instead, what we're gonna do is apply back pressure. I'm reducing the throttle, I'm applying back pressure to raise the nose, not to climb, but to hold altitude. Uh, we are underneath the 110 mark, so if you wanna put your first notch of flaps in. Okay. Flaps to 10 degrees. Okay, we're still maintaining 2,500. Okay. Right, forcing on my continue down to Echo, turn around to Echo, attack the parking via Bravo. Put Continuing your second flaps in. Echo to Bravo. Okay, we want to bump up a little line. power just to ma maintain uh, a little bit of airspeed. Okay, you want to trim out trim out the airplane too to make sure that uh, we maintain. Yeah, I'm definitely land. finding it. Yeah. Okay, so if you hear, uh, Lan instructs me to put more trim in, right? Because I've just changed the configuration of the aircraft. I've put the flaps in, right? It's changed the shape of the wing, and that changes how much pressure I need to be able to hold a level flight attitude. So he says, put more trim in, and I say, yeah, I'm definitely fighting it. That's a really common error from new students performing slow flight or somebody who's trying to increase their proficiency is not using trim. So now when we put flaps in in 172, it's got a pitch up moment, so typically the student climbs, right? And I'm not holding altitude anymore. This maneuver has a really specific altitude standard from when I'm setting up to when I'm actually established in slow flight. For a private pilot, you've got to stay within 100 feet, so plus or minus 100 feet. For a commercial pilot, it's even more strict. It's plus or minus 50 feet. So really important that I'm managing trim as I'm flying through this maneuver and setting up the flaps and getting configured. Clear to land. So One, two, trim it back nine, a little bit. Okay, uh, well. I guess we don't have to yet. All right, we can pull power back a little bit more and put flaps full. Okay, flaps to 30 degrees. Here it comes. Okay, what speed am I looking for? I'm looking for 45. Okay, 45 knots. Okay, let's talk about the airspeed I'm supposed to fly slow flight at for a little bit. Uh, in the ACS standards, it says you're supposed to fly slow flight at the minimum speed, basically that at any point, if I increase angle of attack, or I increase load factor, maybe by banking, right? Or I decrease power, that I would have a stall indication sound. So I'm trying to be that slow. Slow enough that I don't have a stall indication yet, but that any increase, like I said, in pitch attitude, or load factor, or a decrease in power would now cause that. Um, in most of your aircraft that you're training in, you'll have similar stall warning indications as the 172. So in the 172, I've got a stall warning horn that could sound. I have an angle of attack indicator in this one that could also alert me, uh, or I could have buffeting. So any one of those indications now means I need to speed up a little bit because I don't want to have them consistently going off or being experienced while in slow flight. Just above stall. 45 seconds. Okay. Hey, we're losing just a little bit of uh, altitude, air, air speed. So bump up the power just a little bit. We can pull back, pull back on the yoke just a little. Between 45 or 50 knots is, uh, is good enough for me. All right, so this is what's slow foot. Okay, good, 24, just a little hair under 24, a little bump in power a little bit, give us a little bit of climb. Okay, so Lan is coaching me about adding power. And the reason why is here in slow flight, we use pitch for airspeed, power for altitude. So what's a little difficult to see here in the video is I'm actually sinking slightly. Um, I'm losing altitude and I need to increase power to be able to maintain it. Because if I pull back anymore, we're gonna have one of those stall indications like we talked about. Uh, so instead of pulling back, to climb and keep my altitude, I'm gonna be adding power to hold that and I'll use the pitch just to stay at that minimum airspeed, which is about 45 knots in this 172. I feel like I have to add a lot of power to get it to climb, is that pretty normal? Yeah, that's pretty normal because we are in a high drag uh, on the lower end of the power curve. So we are in a high drag, low speed environment. So you're gonna need a bit more power to get us through even two or three knots. All right, good, we're in a nice slow flight. Regime, 2,500 feet, 50 knots. Go ahead and give me a 90 degree turn to the right. Okay. Okay. Now because we're slow, a little bit of loss in the lift component, a component of the forces of flight will cause us to drop our nose a bit. Maintain it with our trim and our yoke. So Lan gave me some really good coaching there. He said, as we begin a bank, we lose some vertical lift because now we're creating horizontal lift. And so 
To keep our same altitude, I need to increase a little bit of lift production. Uh, that could mean adding power or pulling back on the nose a little bit if I've got the airspeed to do it. So it's, he's also coaching me a lot about trim here to make sure that I hold my altitude as I turn. The other thing we didn't talk a lot about was the actual bank angle. How much do we bank? In slow flight, we're never in a hurry. Uh, hence the name slow flight, right? So a little bank goes a long way when I'm flying this slow. I can do 10 degrees bank and we'll get a great rate of turnaround. I really don't need to bank much more than that. Power. Traffic. Two o'clock. Low. One uh, mile. Okay. He's opposite direction. He's, uh... Okay, go ahead and make, give me a 90 degree turn back to the left. Okay. Get out of his way. He's still 500 feet below us. Good. So you feel how mushy the controls are, how much throttle response is required to even keep, maintain airspeed, maintain altitude. Yeah. Um, so in the pattern, when we're going you know, downwind to base or base to final, your controls are going to react in a similar way. You're going to be similarly full flaps, low airspeed. You got to uh, be comfortable with making large movements in the control yoke just to even get minimal movement in um, in direction. So. Okay, so Lan just talked about how this is exactly how the airplane will respond when we're coming in for a landing. We'll have full flaps, we'll be at a minimum airspeed right before we touch down on the ground, right? And he talks about how much control pressure I will have to apply on my controls, right? How much I have to pull back to get a response, how much power I have to add to get my altitude to climb instead of descend. Uh, the same goes for the rudder. We haven't talked a lot about that in this video yet, but that's one of the biggest uh, mistakes I see from new students practicing it is as I get slow and the nose gets high all of my left turning tendencies get a lot stronger so I need more right rudder especially as we're entering this I have to gradually apply rudder as we get slower and slower and slower and the angle of attack gets higher higher and higher so the whole time as I'm making turns as I'm adjusting my speed to stay slow but not having a stall indication sound I'm having to apply right rudder and I'm adjusting it for the specific uh, maneuver that I'm doing at that point point. So really watching coordination. We're so close to a stall and we know if we stall while uncoordinated it could turn into a spin. Um, that it's a place of great emphasis. So watch your rudder when you're performing slow flight. That's why we practice this and that's why it's such an important maneuver for, uh, for learning how to fly. So to recover you're going to go full power. Okay now. Yeah go full power. And let the nose down a little bit. Let the nose go. We're going to build up airspeed, try to maintain 2,500. Let the push it over a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to go flaps to 10, uh, flaps to 20. Okay. Still push over a little bit more. Let the airspeed build up. Flaps to 10. Okay, so right here is where students commonly make mistakes. Let me tell you about the recovery from slow flight. So Lan is coaching me to push over. Essentially, I've added full power and now I don't want to climb. So I'm pushing over to accelerate, but stay at the same altitude we we're already at. Students have a tendency to climb in this maneuver so that um, they're not staying at the same altitude. They aren't correcting for that new power addition. Uh, the next thing he talks about was the flaps, right? So he just told me bring them from full to 20 degrees and the reason why is we really want to be gradual with changing the configuration of our aircraft here we don't want a really big pitch change we want small gradual ones that we can hold altitude through so i have a lot of students who when we first start practicing it try and go from 30 degrees to zero degrees flaps and it's just too much of a pitch change we're unable to keep altitude through it so always do the flaps in increments one notch at a time Number one, and three, then maintain 25 one, six, as airspeed builds up, and then flaps finally Broadway to pull. One, six, clear to land, up, up, up. 2013 Yankee. <laughs> I mean, hotel echo, turn not to pull, up. And we're starting to build Go. airspeed. Go to maintain 2500. Okay, let's go. So right here, I've got flap zero and I've still got full power. It's usually quite a bit of forward pressure on the elevator. So really watch for how much pressure you need to apply and adjust the trim. The trim's gonna help so much in holding altitude. We are now recovered. Alpha, Tango, monitor, ground, three. Okay. So your examiner has two options when you're in slow flight. They either could have you start immediately into another maneuver, which could be the power off stall or something similar, uh, or recover back to cruise like we demonstrated. So be aware on which one your examiner is going to choose and practice it both ways. Okay, that wraps up our video today. If you have a question, leave us a comment and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future videos.